Hey guys, so today I actually got a comment asking me about pressure required for fountain pen writing. Um, you know, the question was, you know, the person that asked the question said that he had a very light hand and he was constantly switching around different ballpoint pens because of that. Uh, and I figured it seems like it would be a pretty decent video idea. <laughs> um, I have here a mishmash of pens. Um, well, let's just kind of dump them out on the table, kind of get a preview of some of the uh, fountain pens that I will do or have done videos on, um, and, and including some uh, ballpoint, well, no, not really ballpoint pens, but I guess you could consider them ballpoint pens. Now, one of the things that I believe I mentioned in my last, you know, my first intro to fountain pen videos is that the nice thing about fountain pens is they require a very light hand, very light pressure to write with. And what I mean by that is with good pens and not necessarily expensive pens, but good writing pens, good fountain pens, um, the Lamy Safaris are an example. You don't need a lot, you know, actually I'm saying Lamy Safari, I don't even have one on the desk. Let me find my pen case. It should be my bag. Oh, that was embarrassing. <laughs> All right, well, throw those two into the mash, mishmash as well. Um, with good pens, like Lamy Safaris, they're not the cheapest fountain pens you can get, I, but they're beginner to intermediate fountain pens. You need very little, oops, sorry, bump tripod. Uh, you need very little pressure to actually write with them. Now, let's say you want to compare it, like this is a Parker ballpoint uh, with a Parker refill. Just, I think this is a jotter. Uh, there we go, it's a Parker refill. Uh, yep, I'm pretty sure it's a jotter. See now, you can kind of see a faint line. This is with very slight pressure. Um, you know, this is no writing pressure at all. Like, if I just hold the pen by the end, you're not going to get anything out of it. Uh, and this isn't a dry refill because, as you can see, when I write with pressure, you can see that the pen does write. Uh, here's a high tech C in 0.4 millimeter tip. Now this is what I, it's not a ballpoint, it's actually uh, an ink pen with a metal tip. This actually does write decently well. Uh, it is a fine tip, so you're not really gonna see the line, but you can definitely see the ink color is much darker than what was on the Parker. Uh, and if I write with it, you can see that the line itself that it creates, not that much different than what you can do with just pen weight alone. And don't forget, this is an all plastic pen basically versus the Jotter, which is a metal pen. Now, my regular recommendations, we'll go with, go with start off with the extra fine Safari first. Uh, this is a little on the dry side, so I'm not sure how well it's going to be, but I know this pen, even though it's an extra fine nib and the tines are slightly misaligned and it is a little scratchy, it will write with just pen weight alone. And it's not a heavy pen, it is basically an all plastic pen. Oh. Ink on the nib may have dried a little bit. You can see here, like, it's a blue ink, so it's a little unfair, but it does put a good amount of uh, ink down. Like I said, it is a it is a drier pen, I suppose you could say. But you know, for me, I can basically write with very little pressure. And like most of the time, when I write, I use my index finger uh, to press down on the pen for downward pressure. And you can see my handwriting is very shaky without any downward pressure. But I can't write. Quite legibly. <laughs> um, if you were to move up to a finer nib, let me just get some ink running. You can see here, just pen weight alone it writes a pretty good line and when I go with you know with no pointer finger versus with pressure obviously when I put a slight word, bit of downward pressure uh, it is a much darker line but you still can write with very little pressure uh, and then you want to maybe let's say and we'll, well, this is a Coleco Sport with Lexington Gray medium nib because of the medium nib, you see it definitely puts down a lot more, a lot more ink with no, no pressure. And you know, yet again, it's basically it skips a little bit, but it is a plastic pen. 
you know, I'm like, here we go. I'm just supporting. I'm supporting the pen. Like, you have to get the sweet spot on the nib. And it writes. <laughs> you know, compared to like a full pressured line or regular pressure line there. Uh, here's another medium nib in my Parker. This is a very wet writer, so and it is a very smooth writer. And let's not forget, Parker 21s, this pen is, it's, a, it's actually a trough clip Parker, and I believe they stopped making this in the 60s, and then they went with the, uh, the arrow clip. Um, so this pen is 50 years old. It's an all-plastic pen. Back then, this pen was $10. This was the cheap pen back in the day, the Parker 21. Uh, the Parker 51 and the Supers were a little more higher end, I suppose you could say. But this was a cheap end. You can still find these on eBay for dirt cheap as well. Uh, maybe not as cheap as they were back then because they're vintage pens. But... Oh, the ink dried on me as I was uh, doing that. But um, once you get the flow going, like, like I don't know how, how else I can like not do any pressure other than the pen. And it writes, and this is, there we go, like, gotta catch it on the sweet spot. That's the last thing with fountain pens, you do have to align the pens properly, but if you do catch it on the sweet spot, that, like, look at that, like, that's normal writing, that's, you know, pen, pen weight alone gives me the same line as normal pressure writing. And I have a very light hand, so... Uh, and even, like, honestly, even with these, like, cheap noodlers... Uh, flex pens, get the ink flowing. It's a little scratchier, so you can see it's a faint line. Uh, I, I suppose you could say it's a comparable to the the ballpoint, the Parker ballpoint. But you know, it is the flex nib, but you can do regular writing with this. And obviously, you could do flexing with it. Fourteen dollar pen. And it's the same thing here. Uh, some Twisbees. 540 in a medium nib. Of course, you have to get it started. Once you get it started, like I said, no pressure. Like I know I'm not really writing, but it's like no pressure, and I get a nice thick line. Just with granted, this is a heavier pen, even though it is plastic. But you know, compared to the line that you get with no pressure versus writing pressure, it's basically the same. Same goes for the VAC 700. This is a fine nib. See that? No pressure. I'm not even holding it with my thumb. Like it's it, it's in the web of my palm right now. And you can write with it. Uh, granted, these you know these Twisby pens are not as wet of writers as the Parker 21s, so the line you get won't be as thick. And then my go-to pen, Lamy 2000. This is an extra fine nib. Look at that. This is what a really nice pen will give you. You know, this is more towards the expensive side. Um, like, it's a round pen, so I can't not put any pressure on it. Like, here, let me just hold it by the very end, by the tips of my finger. It gives you, it gives you a writing line. I, I can't write this way. You know, versus me writing normally. So, not a huge difference in the line. Let me just bring you up close so you can see. You see there to the right over here is the line I wrote with my regular writing pressure versus pen weight alone. So yeah, fountain pens, definitely the way to go. You know, like I said, with the Parker, pen weight alone with a metal body pen, a stainless steel body pen. Can't even see it. Extra fine. Lamy Safari, you can still see it. Uh, here it is with regular writing pressure. Uh, what was this again? I don't remember what this was. Wait, my mistake. No, that was the uh, high tech C. <laughs> high tech C. Um, this is the extra fine. My mistake. This is the extra fine Lamy Safari. Here's the fine Lamy Safari, I think, I want to say, maybe, or the Kaweco, I don't really remember anymore. 
Go back in the video and see. Definitely my favorite, Parker 21. Look at that. No pressure writing, which is completely illegible, you know, versus pressure writing. It's basically the same exact line. Um, the only thing about the Parker 21, it, it is difficult to find one that's in good condition. Uh, the plastic did have issues with shrinkage <laughs> um, over time, and they'll crack. And it is a vacuumatic, it's, it's a vac sack filler, so it's not as convenient as a piston filler, a vacuum filler, or a cartridge converter pen. But it is a nice pen for very cheap money. Like, I, I really love this. It's like a wet writer. I really love it because uh, for inks that shade nicely, oh, it's so smooth. Like, like I, it's so. I, I'm when I normally write, it's a very light hand. I don't put a lot of pressure. Like it's it it. I'm literally just holding the pen in the web of my hand, and it puts out the same amount of ink as I do with regular pressure writing. It's just incredible how how amazingly smooth fountain pens are when they write compared to ballpoints. So yeah, hope you guys uh, learned something informative about fountain pens from this video, and thanks for watching.